being an anime fan in the early 2000s was no easy task, and I would know. Because I'm old. You had to either rent DVDs from the library, find it in 17 parts on YouTube mirrored, or download it from sketchy pirated websites. It was awesome. The only real televised anime we had was like Naruto, Pokemon, Bleach here and there. There, was, there wasn't a lot to pick from. If your parents were cool, they'd let you stay up and watch Toonami and they would just air whatever the hell they felt like airing, random episodes at random times. It was really hard to watch a full series on Toonami. I only managed to do it once. I remember recording Death Note for like a year straight because we got one episode a week, but I sure did it. All that being said, there was a cartoon that caught my eye called Kappa Mikey. Created by Larry Schwarz in 2006, Kappa Mikey was originally announced for children's TV channel Noggin's teen segment called The End, but was instead picked up by Noggin's sister channel Nicktoons Network. Kappa Mikey became the first half-hour series to exclusively air on Nicktoons Network. Kappa Mikey is meant to be a parody of anime. The main character, Mikey Simon, dreams of becoming an actor, but bombs every audition that he does because he's genuinely a terrible actor. Okay, what Mikey. is a briefcase? From what hand came this plastic-handled, leather-bound piece of brilliance? He's just about to give up when a scratch-off ticket smacks him in the face. He scratches it off to reveal he's won a spot on the tokusatsu show Lily Moo. For those of you who don't know what tokusatsu is, it's pretty much like the Power Rangers or even Godzilla, an action-based show that relies on practical effects to portray their storyline. According to the show, Lily Moo was once a really popular show, but due to its recently poor ratings, producer Ozu decides to shut the whole thing down, canceling the show. The cast begs him to hold out and try to find a new main character to spice things up, and that's where the scratch-off comes into play. After winning, Mikey flies to Japan and his presence instantly saves the show. Each episode usually starts out with the cast doing a shoot for Lily Moo, somehow messing it up, and the rest of the episode is them getting into shenanigans and how those shenanigans end up helping them shoot the prior shot better. The shenanigans that they get into are also usually heavily based on Japanese culture as the show does take place in Japan, which I think is really cool. The relationship between the characters in Kappa Mikey further exemplifies the show's exploration of cultural convergence. The diverse cast of characters, each representing different aspects of Japanese and American culture, learn to cooperate, appreciate one another's strengths, and navigate their differences. Through these interactions, the show reinforces the idea that despite cultural disparities, people can form genuine connections based on shared experiences and emotions. One thing that really like sets this show apart apart from the others is the really amazing art style. So Mikey Simon is obviously American and the rest of the cast is Japanese. So Mikey is drawn in a Western art style, whereas the Japanese characters are drawn in an anime art style. And it's, it's really hilarious because when the Japanese characters that are drawn in the anime art style are upset or angry, how they're drawn like heavily represents their like emotion like when they're sad they get all chibi like and when they're angry their heads get like really big and like how they do in anime and mikey is frustrated that he can't do the same thing but he can't because he's drawn in a western art style instead of anime it's it's real i mean it's a really funny concept on top of them kind of playing with the art style in that sense, the characters that are from Japan and, you know, a part of Lily Moo are also representative of different types of anime. So, like, Gonard is going to be like a shonen anime. He's drawn similarly to Dragon Ball Z, Naruto, stuff like that. Lily and Mitsuki are drawn more like shoujo anime. And then Guano is representative of the mascot kind of anime, like Pokemon, Hello Kitty, stuff like that. As I stated before, Gonard represents shonen anime. He's drawn similarly to the characters in Dragon Ball, and in Lily Moo, he plays the villain, Super Gonard. Super Gonard actively tries to take over and destroy Tokyo. While on Lily Moo, Lily plays a sort of damsel in distress character. However, she's completely different from that in real life. Before Mikey was brought to the show, she was the main character, hence the name Lily Moo. 
once Mikey is in the picture, she does actively try to get him fired from the show so she can take over her old role of being the main character. Even though Lily is friends with all the other cast members from the show Lily Moo, she is seen more as the villain of the show Kappa Mikey just because of her resentment of the main character Mikey, even though the producer of the show of the show Lily Moo, sorry if that gets a little confusing, Ozu does tell her constantly that without Mikey, the show would have been canceled. She's a failing actress and is full of resentment. Even though she's really nasty to Mikey, he's got a crush on her that obviously is not reciprocated and it's even hinted at that she has feelings for Gonard and that he likes her as well. Mitsuki is our level-headed, heart of gold, best friend to everyone character. Throughout the show, she has a huge crush on Mikey, but Mikey just never comes to realize this. On Lily Moo, her character is like a baddie, like tough as nails, which is completely the opposite of who she is in real life. In addition to all of that, before she was on the show Lily Moo, she was a secret agent spy that went by Agent M and she does not feel that acting is her true calling, but she feels immense pressure to be an actress as her entire family is actors and actresses. Guano is the most out-of-pocket character on the show. He is meant to represent the anime mascots like Pikachu and Kyubei from Madoka Magica, just supposed to be there as a little cutie pie, right? Uh, his role in Lily Moo is that all that he can say is his name, but in real life, he is actually a man in a fursuit. No one has ever seen him without the costume on, and he wears it all the time even when they're not shooting for the show. It's revealed later in the series that Guano is actually Ozu's son. Ozu is the producer of the show. And so that like proves that he is just a man in a fursuit, which is like, it's just crazy. I love it so much. He also is the director of Lily Moo. So in the show, all he says is his name. So when he's in Lily Moo, all he says is Guano Guano, like a Pokemon. But when they shop, when they stop shooting the show, he's the director. It's so, it's so funny. It's so out of pocket. The show adeptly combines elements of Western and Eastern cultures, showcasing a harmonious blend that reflects the interconnected world we live in. Through its humor, characters, and narrative, Kappa Mikey celebrates diversity, challenges stereotypes, and highlights the universality of human experiences. Mikey's interactions with his Japanese co-stars, cultural misunderstandings, and comedic situations provide a lens through which viewers can appreciate the nuance and commonalities between these two distinct cultures. Emotions, friendships, aspirations, and challenges are themes that resonate with audiences across the globe regardless of their cultural background. By presenting these themes within a context of cultural convergence, the show emphasizes that at our core, we share more similarities than differences. These characters really are what separate Kappa Mikey from other shows that were airing at the time because all of these characters are like terrible selfish people like none of them are good people and I love it Mikey is super cocky and lets the fame go to his head. Gonard, while supposed to be like the idiot character, I, I don't think that he's as stupid as he lets on and I think a lot of his actions are out of malice and not just because he's stupid. So like he's just like kind of a mean guy. Ozu is an out of touch businessman who is ready to fire everyone like it's like it just means nothing. All he cares about is money and the success of the show and has like no emotional attachment to the people that he hired for the show. Like he lets the entire cast just like feel like a constant state of anxiety because every single episode they're ready to cancel Lily Moon. And Lily is just like a narcissistic asshole who wants to be the main character again. That being said, just because we aren't rooting for any of these main characters, it doesn't make the show uninteresting or bad. I love watching these absolute morons fail time and time again. Not only are all of these characters references for different anime tropes, but there's also like really niche anime references throughout the show that would easily go over someone's head if they hadn't seen the anime, but it doesn't take away from the show, like it doesn't feel like you're missing the references just because you don't understand the reference. The flow of the show is never interrupted 
by these references being put in place they're just it's really rewarding to those that do understand the references it's all done in like very clever subtle ways that i can't wait for the next episode to see what i'm gonna like what's gonna come up in the next episode that i get and like what i just happen to miss because i haven't seen the anime that they're referencing on top of the many anime references that they make, they also make a ton of like cultural references to Japan, which is really, really fun to watch. They make it so that Mikey, like, is clear Mikey is clearly experiencing these things for the first time, and they do a really good job of showing how someone not used to Japanese culture would probably react to Japanese culture. So it's really easy for an American like myself to put myself in Mikey's shoes while he's experiencing a culture so different from his. And they do it in a very respectful and very fun way. I think Kappa Mikey is a big reason why I am interested in Japanese culture and probably why some other people are too. Even the name of the show is a Japanese pun. A Kappa Maki is a cucumber sushi roll and even a kappa is a part of Japanese folklore. They are Japanese river spirits and they do show up in the show from time to time. One of the most commendable aspects of Kappa Mikey is its willingness to challenge stereotypes and culture norms. Mikey Simon's character exemplifies this as he initially embodies certain Western stereotypes about Americans. However, as the series progresses, he learns to adapt, appreciate, and understand the Japanese culture he finds himself immersed in. Throughout his experiences, the show emphasizes the importance of embracing diversity and the value of learning from one another's backgrounds. Humor serves as a universal language that transcends cultural boundaries, and Kappa Mikey effectively employs humor to create a shared experience for its global audience. The show's comedy is the product of the collision between Western and Eastern cultures resulting in a dynamic and relatable form of entertainment. Whether it's humorous cross-culture misunderstandings or slapstick comedy, the show's comedic elements showcase the commonality of laughter across different cultural contexts. The intro to Kappa Mikey is also a total banger, and it's made by the Beat Crusaders, who made the opening for Beck, which is like is such a good opening. They also made the fourth Bleach intro. Like, their music is so good, and it's a real anime opening for the show Kappa Mikey. Like, they, they paid the Beat Crusaders to make a real anime intro for the show that is an anime parody, and I, I just love that. I think that's hilarious. And again, it's a massive banger. I think I've been singing it to myself for 20 years. Like, it's just, it's never not in my head. Unfortunately, Captain Mikey was canceled after just two seasons, and I fully believe it's because it was misunderstood and ahead of its time. This hasn't been confirmed, but I do believe that the show was probably canceled because of low views. Anime just wasn't as mainstream at the time, and I think a lot of the references were lost on many viewers. Like I said at the beginning of this video, anime wasn't accessible in the early 2000s. We didn't have stuff like Hulu, Netflix, Crunchyroll apps, like there, it just wasn't accessible at the time. I think if Kappa Mikey had come out now instead of 20 years ago, it would have been a lot more successful, or at least appreciated. Kappa Mikey is more than just an animated series. It's a testament to the beauty of cultural convergence and the power of storytelling to bridge gaps between different societies. By skillfully blending elements of Western and Eastern cultures, the show celebrates diversity, challenges stereotypes, and underscores the universality of human experiences. As our world becomes increasingly interconnected, the lessons imparted by Kappa Mikey remain relevant, encouraging us to embrace the differences that enrich our lives while recognizing the common threads that bind us together. Also, just one more little fun fact. In 2013, after Kappa Mikey had already been canceled for years, they came out with a spin-off series called Dancing Sushi. In the middle of Kappa Mikey episodes, when they would like cut to new scenes, and for whatever reason, on the channel Cubix, they decided to make a mini series about these sushi. It, it, it's just bizarre. Like, the show failed. It had already been canceled for a decently long time. And they said, you know what? Let's bring back the most redundant part of Kappa Mikey and give it its own miniseries. 
whatever. It, it was just weird. I don't know why they did it. Um, that being said, if you want to watch Kappa Mikey, it's all available on YouTube. That's where I rewatch it. I think it's a great show and I highly recommend it. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Bye.